All right, guys, so big thank you to Maritime Steel. What I found in looking at about 15 different steel supply shops. This stuff was either in Utah or it was in Colorado or it was in all over the East Coast. And I've heard great things about New Jersey steel barons, but the shipping was about the same price as the steel. So Maritime seems to be like it's closer to Montana. I'm guessing it's out of Canada. I think when I did my research, it was pretty close to the border. So Seattle, Montana, Idaho, this is probably a decent place to get steel. But I got two forfeit pieces. This is two inch wide and it is, what is it? Oh yeah, quarter, quarter inch thick. So I'm gonna try and make some much bigger knives today. Pretty excited. But this is high carbon steel, 1084. The first thing I do here is I make sure I get a measurement on the bar stock as it starts out. I get a general plan and an outline set out to what I want it to become. I use a thick set of welding gloves and I only use one glove on the left hand holding the material handle that I use to pull it out of the forge. It's very hot, so you'll see me quench this over time just on the handle so I don't burn my glove. What I'm doing here is I'm just lengthening out the bar to about the general length that I want to use. And I'm using the peening hand to kind of take small, thin strikes in a specific area to lengthen out the bar. And then I flatten things back out with the round end of the hammer, making sure that I try and take out as many dents as possible. After I get that kind of straight to the length that I want, I do want some curve to it, but I pop it back in the forge, pull it out, and I start working on the tip almost immediately. So now that I've got a general shape for the tip, you'll see me take out a piece of leaf spring that I carved a general shape for this Bowie Hunter into so I can get an overall length measurement and just a general bend concept for how I'm gonna put this over the horn.
So right here, you can see that the handle has really started to bend on me and you have to get that out. So I hammer this kind of just on the handle point over the anvil to make sure that I over adjust for that position. And now that it's really in a heated place, every time I make a hammer strike over the horn, it just bends that handle back. So I go back to basically my quote unquote water quench station and I'm just water quenching that position on that handle to where I hope I can get it to stay. But every time I heat it, it just changes. So back and forth over the horn, trying to get that S curve into that hunter fighter knife position and checking it against the carve out that I have again on the leaf spring. So here I'm wrapping up the second portion of the S-curve in this blade so that I can get the right indentation that I want in the curve. <clears throat> Every time you strike and mash anywhere around the tops of the billet, what you have happen is kind of this mushing effect that you then have to strike and even out and then make sure that the entire blade is still as flat as possible. Yeah. So I do use a combination of hammer striking, visual detection, and using the vise that I don't show because I didn't have time to move the camera while the, while the steel was still hot. But again, you know, trying to get that piece of the handle hard so that as I strike the curve, it doesn't change. From this point of the video on, it's absolutely just finishing where I want the blade to have its position, uh, trying to taper where I believe the blade edge should be, and then finally just making sure not only is everything straight and flat as possible, but are the thinner points of the knives and the distal taper where I want it to be. And for those of you that don't know what a distal taper is, if you look at a blade profile, uh, like you would in like an engineering document where the blade is kind of just laying flat on the ground, then you would see that there's almost a diamond shape between the tip of the blade and the tip of the tang or the end of where the handle's at. Uh, and its thickest point is right there where the guard fits in or the finger groove. It's right where the blade is no longer edged and the start of where you would hold it or its handle area begins. And the reason that that's supposed to be the thickest point in the knife is because that's typically the easiest point to break a blade if you're wedging or cutting or stabbing or doing any difficult work.
Now what you're looking at is me just checking over where the point is on the blade to make sure that I like where it's leveled up with where the guard is going to fit or what I would consider the center weight placement of the midpoint of the knife. Where you would feel pressure if you stabbed or did anything like that in pressure work with a fighter knife. But this is the basic shape that things should be at before we take it, put it in the vise, grind off all the rough crust that's on there because, uh, well, to be honest, my forge is, is not perfect in the way that it's constructed and some of that gunk is actually overheated material within it. So when I finally take it over, put it on the grinding wheel, grind some stuff out, make some drawing adjustments, and we're done.